Hello. I'm sorry, I did not notice you there. I was too engrossed in this poem, To Autumn, by William Blake. What's that? You want me to tell you more about this poem? I would be happy to oblige. This poem personifies the seasons and other elements of nature to capture the spirit of fall as a transition from summer to winter. So the tone is admiring and lustful and summery and the mood is cheery and triumphant at first, but towards the end it changes to a more wintry, chill tone and mood. Be sure to notice that for most of the poem, Autumn is actually talking, other than the, the beginning and the end. And also note that this poem is more about the imagery and emotion and the feeling more than any hidden morals. The poem reads as thus. O oh, autumn, laden with fruit and stained with the blood of the grape, pass not, but sit beneath my shady roof. There thou mayest rest, and tune thy jolly voice to my fresh pipe, and all the daughters of the year shall dance. Sing now the lusty song of fruit and flowers. The narrow bud opens her beauties to the sun, and love runs in her thrilling veins. Blossoms hang round the brows of morning and flourished on the bright cheek of modest Eve, till clustering summer breaks forth into singing, and feathered clouds strew flowers round her head. The spirits of the air live on in the smells of fruit, and joy with pinions light roves around the gardens or sits singing in the trees. Thus sang the jolly autumn as he sat, then rose, girded himself, and o'er the bleak hills fled from our sight, but left his golden load. The first stanza is mainly the narrator beseeching Autumn to stay and keep his wonder and happiness around. And Blake mainly does this through lots of rich imagery, such as laden with fruit, stained with the blood of the grape, which is a reference to wine. Um, shady roof, jolly voice, and lusty song of fruits and flowers all work together really well to create that autumnal feel and help enrich that mood. The second stanza is mainly Autumn describing the evidence of summer still around, and the feeling becomes more sensual. And Blake personifies both the bud, morning, and eve, which in this context means evening, and then later summer itself as well as clouds. And they're all working together to form a uh, sensual mood. In the beginning of the third stanza, Blake continues the joyful autumnal mood, um, he personifies Joy, and describes her as having pinions, which means wings, and uses a lot more rich imagery, such as the smells of fruit, and also adds in there some light, playful alliteration, like roves around and sits singing. Then, Blake makes an abrupt change to signal the cold feeling of the coming of winter. As autumn leaves, the diction becomes much more harsh to end the poem and create a different, completely different mood and wintry feeling. And that last line, fled from our sight but left his golden load, my first thought was that the oncoming winter scared the crap out of Autumn, quite literally, but um, upon looking closer it doesn't seem that fits the mood at all of the poem or any of the ideas, so I figure that's more like a layer of golden leaves. Just some fun facts, this poem is an ode devoted to Autumn, it's also an apostrophe addressing Autumn, and it also has a lot of enjambment. A most splendid piece of work, I must say. That is all.